Today we're going to take a look at the Scaletron Survey Counter Canadian Pacific AC4400 CW and this is in the CP Beaver color scheme. So let's get started here in the front. On top we have the windshield wipers, lines in the glass, and the nose is painted with this black triangle shape. We've also got some grab irons and some sand filler hatches. In the center we have the CP logo, a nose mounted headlight, there's also a checkerboard pattern on the door which is on the right hand side. We have white painted grab irons. It also has its number boards mounted on the nose. We've also got a grab iron ladder on the left. And down here is a first aid kit symbol. Then we got a pair of ditch lights here, some stanches in the middle with a chain, and the anti climb below which has a top mounted MU cable receptacle on the right hand side so if you look at it from the top the stanchion goes actually inwards. There's also this random hole at the bottom. So underneath the anti-climber we have the MU cable. There's also some printing here which is actually quite legible talking about cable jumpers. Also some support beams on the sides. Then we got this big snow plow with some air hoses, two train line hoses, a coupler cut lever on the top and the air hoses do have some labeling. And it's using the Scale Trains Type E knuckle coupler made of metal. Alright, so now let's go check out the side. So in the front we have a stairwell painted with white stripes. And as always the F for front. Then here are the side cab windows. There's two boxy ones and a rounded one in the front. There also is a side view mirror. The windows on the sides are tinted but it does have an interior which you can kind of see through the front. Then we got the road number 9658, the locomotive class, and apparently CP calls this the DRF44, which interesting enough is the same exact name they give to the Jivo. This is because they're both diesel road freight and they both have 4400 horsepower. Then we have some multi-in detailing, there's a lot of rivets and warning labels, a jacking pad down below, and this is the first model I have a GE steerable truck. These were designed to steer into curves, rotating each axle individually. There's also this axle generator. Also if you look at the wheels, they're painted in this rust color brown. Now it's actually the first time Scale Trains has done something like this. On the ends of the truck there also is this bracket piece and that's just to hold in the sanding lines which are down below. And on the side of the fuel tank there's a mechanical steel bell. Behind the cab we have this inverter cabinet. This converts power into AC traction. It's detailed with some molded in panels. On top there's a walkway with some railings, two dynamic brake vents, and an air intake. There's also this window in the cab with a windshield wiper. And behind the cabinet there's a grab iron ladder and a capacitor box. Down below we have the fuel tank. There there are tiny details like the emergency cutoff switch, the fuel filler, and the fuel gauge. And you can see the railings go across, goes horizontally there. And you may notice the railing stanchions are actually spaced differently. Then here it says Canadian Pacific and their Canadian Pacific Railway Beaver logo. It says it's founded in 1881 with a shield, some access panel doors molded in. Then in the back we have the radiator and you can actually see through some of the vents here. It's made of etched metal parts and in the middle we got the brake wheel. Down below we have a lot of plumbing detail here. And we got this brake chain, it's actually two separate parts so if you move the truck it can move freely. Then we got the white sill, there's many details inside. This one talks about lube oil and I think the second sign is a French translation. Then next to it is an AI data tag and this basically transfers information via radio identifying what locomotive or freight car it is and it's pretty much an all rolling stock. Now let's go take a look at the rear. So then we got the road number 9658, grab irons on left for the ladder. And then on top we have this headlight and it's actually kind of weird because there's only one of it. Usually it comes in pairs and on the sides we got some box lifting lugs and the rear MU cable receptacle is standing to the side of the stanchions rather than in the front and on this side this handle is painted red instead of black. Then at the bottom we have some spare knuckle coupler holders and it's kind of interesting that they're both on one side and according to a guy on reddit this box is used to store the end of train device when it's not in use. Now let's check out the engineer's side. So on top there's a print for a fire extinguisher and the vents here are different from the other side. Moving along we have this grand white air dryer on the bottom. Then we got two air reservoir tanks for the air brake system. You can see some piping in between. More fuel tank details here. Then we have the central air intake and the dynamic brake air intakes, which are actually see-through if you look at it through the light. And there's also these X panels. Then we got a door to the side. There's a 
door handle there and a door to access the cab, fire extinguisher logo, there's a little step up here and a walkway light to the side. There's also some access doors molded into the walkway. Then down below we have a spitter valve and the other AEI tag, a hose on the side of the fuel tank. Then to the side of the cab windows are the mirrors, there's a small one here, large one in the back. Then at the bottom we have these two square vents. Now I don't know if this is intentional or not, but there's light gray weathering on it. And to the side we have the GE builder plates. And here's how it looks like from this angle. Now let's go check out the roof detail. So on top you can see the walkway treading and the steps on the sides are see-through. Then we got the black triangle on the hood with a line divide in the middle, a grab iron on the top, and some circles, which I don't know what's it for so let me know if you do. Then we have some Sinclair antennas and a smaller one in the back for EOT. In the back we have some panels, some labels, and some latches. There's actually a little crack in one of them, so I wonder if it's a separately applied piece. Then we have a small grill here, some more latches, treading here in the middle, a K3 LAR2 horn, and a exhaust stack which does have like a V shape in it. Then we have the radiator with some etched metal grills and some treading in the front and the back and a sand filler hatch. So on top of the inverter cabinet, there is no walkway treading. See there's a black line in the middle with red on the sides while on the walkways, it goes all the way across. So here's what it looks like on the bottom. Got some bumps for the axles. In the middle is a screw, some lines on the sides. They go all the way through the fuel tank. And here's the back. You can see the wheel faces are painted brown, but underneath they left it silver. Now one issue I have with this is the lift rings, there's actually a missing one here. And the one on the other side is crooked with some chip paint. And the paint actually filled in the inside of the hole so you can't see through it. So I emailed Skeletrains and they sent me some lift rings. I did have to paint it myself so I added primer and red. It was actually a little bit too thick so maybe you don't even need primer. And poke holes through the other one. And from far away you can't even tell the difference. So here we have three scale trains GE locomotives. It's kind of like an evolution from old to new. Here we got the Dash 9, the AC44 100, and the ES44 Jivo. So the difference is the Dash 9 runs on DC power and it has a small air conditioner here behind the cab. While on the AC44 100, there's a large inverter cabinet to convert to AC power. AC power is more efficient and that's what the Jivo uses as well. Another difference is the rear of the locomotives where the radiator is housed. The Dash 9 and the AC44 100 use the same style radiator, but the Jivo has a square square section in the front of it. Also the central air intakes appear to get smaller over time and the dynamic brake vents keep changing their place or their number. The BNSF has a pretty standard two headlights in the back while Canadian Pacific just has that one headlight which again is pretty weird. See on the Jivo they also have two. Now I did notice the MU cable holders are slightly different as well. That could just be scale trains though. You can see normally the spare knuckle couplers are on both sides but on the CP they're both on one side. Now again this is actually my first locomotive with GE steerable trucks. If you look at the other ones, they're using the GE hi ad trucks. It also shares the same type of cab window with my Southern Pacific Dash 9. Another weird thing about this locomotive, it's missing a sunshade, which is present on pretty much every other locomotive. So here's my Athern Genesis SC70 ACU, also Canadian Pacific. Notice how the number boards are mounted in the nose. While on the ACU it's mounted on top, it's actually quite rare to see nose mounted number boards. They also both have this red and white pattern, although it's a different style. The MU cable receptacle is also different. Although they're both painted in red, their reds are actually slightly different. Athern is a bit lighter, while Scale Trains is darker. They also paint their grab irons a different color, black and white, versus all red. This one is DRF44, while the ACU is a 43, so the ACU has less horsepower. And here you can try to tell the color difference between the two. Athern's more vibrant and Skill Trains is darker, possibly more realistic though. They both have black on their noses. Now what I didn't know was that these are actually two separate liveries. You could tell them apart because their logos are different. The AC44's Beaver logo is a lot more detailed, has a gradient on it, it's a bit of an old school style. While the ACU has this newer, cleaner look to it with only one color. Athern actually uses real chains for its brake chain, as compared to Skill Trains which is static. So in the back, the ACU has a big CP logo and two road numbers. First one big road number. It also has some ditch lights while the other does not. They do both have two train line hoses though. I also picked up the Skill Train CSX covered hopper. It's painted in this nice vanilla beige yellow color. I reviewed other versions of this car in the past, so I'm just gonna give a brief overview. So here's the front, there's some nice printing, air brake detail at the bottom, and there's actually a placard inside. And on this side, we have the CSX transportation <laughs> car number, and there's actually another hazmat placard here, and it actually sticks out of the body, and when I bought this, I had no idea this was gonna be a feature. If you look closely, there's actually a hole in it. And at the bottom, we have three bays, they're painted in light gray. Now this car does have a tendency to wobble, 
wobble whenever I move it, and we'll take a closer look at that in a few seconds. But first I want to just show you the rest of the car. Also a placard here, and the other side is almost identical. Here are some close-up shots to show you all the little detail and printing that's on this model. And here's what the roof looks like very briefly. So here's the CSX hopper, the BNSF hopper, and the KCS hopper. Now KCS wobbles a little bit, the BNSF nothing at all, and the CSX is quite severe. So what's happening is the bogey is rocking back and forth on the sides, while BNSF does not go that far. So I tried tightening the screws to see if that would make a difference. No, it did not. So I checked it with the KD coupler height gauge and it turned out to be too short. The height gauge also comes with these washers. You can use this to bolster up the trucks. And yeah, that's pretty much eliminated all the car wobble. Nice! I also checked out the coupler height gauge and it appeared to be dead on. Now with this newfound knowledge, I decided to fix my other car. My tank car also had the same issue. So I put in the washers and now it is fixed. No wobble whatsoever. And the coupler's correct height. I also fixed up the KCS. So this is Skillshare's first run of the AC4400CW. It looks pretty realistic and I think they overall done a pretty good job. There's definitely a lot of unique things that I haven't seen before like the nose number boards, the GE steerable trucks, a single headlight in the back, the EOT holder box, and the fact that there's different Canadian Pacific Beaver logos. I had no clue about that. It's also the first time Skillshare's painted their wheels a rust brown. I wonder if they'll keep doing this for locomotives in the future. The only flaw I can find are the lift rings and Skillshare's has excellent customer service so I was able to get a replacement real fast. And fun fact, this is the same type of locomotive they used in the movie Unstoppable. They used Canadian Pacific AC4400s and repainted them for AWVR. As for the CSX Hopper, it looks pretty amazing and it's highly detailed as always. However, it did have a severe car body wobble. On a positive note, it did force me to learn how to fix this issue. Just add a washer and it also fix the coupler height. And if this problem does come up again, now I know how to deal with it. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, hit the like button down below, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!